All right, this video is going to be a thorough factoring review, but it's not meant to be a video that teaches you all the factoring techniques. It's a quick run through of the different types of factoring and a few examples of each. If you need more practice with this, please search the internet. I've got some videos on factoring that are more detailed, but this is a quick run through, so take it for what it is. So let's get started with our factoring review. The first thing is I want to talk about the things you always want to do when you factor. You always want to write the polynomial in descending order from highest power to lowest power. And then if there's a greatest common factor, factor it out. In particular, if the leading term is negative, factor that negative out with the GCF. Finally, keep factoring until you're done. If something can factor more, keep going. And I don't want to give you a false sense of confidence. Most polynomials cannot factor. We call them prime, but we're going to focus on polynomials that do factor. The first technique, factoring by grouping. We try this technique grouping whenever the polynomial has four terms. Here's an example. I'm going to start with a simple example where I'm asking you to factor out the GCF. And we can see that the first half of this polynomial has a y minus 2 factor. The second half of the polynomial has a y minus 2 factor. So all we do is we pull out that common GCF of y minus 2, leaving behind the 3y squared plus 4. And now it's factored. OK, let's see how we can broaden this to factoring by grouping. In this polynomial, we can see that it's already in descending order, y cubed, y squared, y, and then the constant, so highest power to lowest power. The leading term's not negative, and there's no greatest common factor. So we're just going to go ahead and do factoring by grouping. So I grouped the first two terms and the last two terms. In my first two terms, I can pull out a 3y squared, which will leave behind a y minus 2. In my last two terms, I can factor out a positive 4, leaving behind also a y minus 2. The key to grouping working is to get that red y minus 2, or whatever is left there, to match. And since they match, we can factor out the common y minus 2 from both groups. And now we have a factored polynomial. Next example, we can see this is not in descending order. So let's rewrite it first. And then in our first two terms, we have a w squared in common. And in our last term, we have a positive 3 in common. So we'll factor out the w squared, leaving behind a w plus 7. We'll factor out a positive 3, leaving a w plus 7. Now we factor out the common w plus 7 from each group. And that's it. Next example is also not in descending order, so let's rewrite it. Now we can see that our first term is negative. We're, that means we're going to have to factor that negative out. And also, every term here has a factor of 2y, so we're going to factor out a negative 2y from every term. Now, we're not done because inside the parentheses, we have four terms. So let's factor that by grouping. In our first two terms inside, we can factor out a 2y squared. and our last two terms, we can factor out a negative 1. Notice that when we factor out the 2y squared and the negative 1 from our groups, we get something that matches. We, they both leave behind a 3y plus 7, which we can then factor out of both of those groups. Notice we're carrying along our negative 2y GCF in every step. So if I keep my negative 2y, and then I factor out my 3y plus 7 from the inside. That leaves behind just a 2y squared minus 1. And now we're factored. The next technique is a really important one. It's factoring three terms using the AC method, factoring a trinomial using the AC method. This technique uses grouping. That's why we covered grouping first. Here's an example. 6x squared minus 1x minus 15. You can think about the coefficients 6, negative 1, and negative 15 as a, b, and c. That's why it's called the AC method. The first thing you do is multiply a times c, 6 times negative 15, which is negative 90. 
And our goal is going to be to find two numbers that multiply to equal that a times c, that negative 90. But the two numbers we find that multiply to equal negative 90 also have to add to equal our b value of negative 1. So now let's look at all the numbers that multiply to equal negative 90. We could do 1 times negative 90, 2 times negative 45, 3 times negative 30, 5 times negative 18, 6 times negative 15, and 9 times negative 10. And we can see that 9 times negative 10 is negative 90, but more importantly, 9 plus negative 10 equals our b value negative 1. So we're going to move forward now using the 9 and the negative 10 that we just found. The way we use the 9 and the negative 10 is to split that negative 1x middle term into positive 9x and negative 10x. Now you can see we have four terms, so we'll use grouping. Our first two terms, we can pull a 3x out, and our last two terms, we can pull out a negative 5. And when we pull those out, they both leave behind a common factor of 2x plus 3, which we'll then pull out and get 2x plus 3 times 3x minus 5. And now we're factored. The key is finding the two numbers to split the middle term, though. Let's try another one. 3k minus k squared plus 10. We're going to put that in descending order first, and then we'll factor out the negative 1 GCF because that leading coefficient is negative. Now inside, I've got three terms, so I need to try to split the middle term, negative 3k. a times c is 1 times negative 10, which is negative 10. So I'm trying to find two numbers that multiply to equal negative 10 and add to equal the b value of negative 3. Well, 2 and negative 5 will multiply to be negative 10 and add to be negative 3. Once we split the middle term, we have four terms inside the parentheses, so we'll use grouping. I can pull a k out of my first group. I can pull a negative 5 out of my second group. And they both leave behind a common factor of k plus 2, which I'll then pull out giving me my GCF negative 1 times that common factor k plus 2 times the remaining k minus 5. Now, typically, we don't write the negative 1. If it's multiplied, we just write a negative. Let's move on to our last technique, factoring a difference of squares. We try this whenever we have two terms or a binomial. For example, if we have negative 25 plus 36z squared, we're going to first put that in descending order. And you can see that this is a difference because of the minus, and it's a difference of two squares, 36z squared and 25. Whenever this happens, it's really easy to factor. We just have to use the, the fact that these are perfect squares and a negative. So we're going to use what are called conjugates to get 6z plus 5 times 6z minus 5. When you factor a difference of two squares, you always get the same two factors, but one's positive and one's negative. Notice that 6z times 6z is the 36z squared, and the positive 5 times the negative 5 is the negative 25. Let's try something similar in 25 plus 36z squared. Put it in descending order. You'll notice that this is not a difference. There's no minus. There's no GCF. There's no nothing. This guy cannot factor. This is prime. Let's try another binomial, x squared minus x to the sixth. First, put it in descending order. And now factor out the GCF, which is x squared, but we have a negative leading coefficient. So we'll pull a negative x squared out, which of course switches the signs inside. Now we're left with x to the fourth minus 1, which is a binomial. Notice that it is a difference because of the minus, and it's a difference of two squares because x to the fourth and positive 1 are perfect squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep our negative x squared GCF outside, and we're going to factor x to the fourth minus 1 using its conjugate. Conjugates x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1. Now don't fall into the trap of thinking you're done. We already know x squared plus 1 will not factor because it's not a difference of two squares, but x squared minus 1 will factor because it is a difference of two squares, and it factors as x plus 1, x minus 1. And we pull along everything we had from before, and we're finished with this problem. 
In summary, always put your polynomial in descending order, then pull out a greatest common factor if possible, watch for that negative, and then proceed by counting the terms. If you have four terms, try grouping. If you have three terms, try the AC method. If you have two terms, try a difference of squares. Here's an example that mixes techniques. x to the fourth minus 15x squared minus 16. It's in descending order and there's no GCF. So we count the terms. There are three, so we need to use the AC method. We need to find two numbers that multiply to be 1 times negative 16, which is negative 16, and adds to be negative 15. Well, 1 times negative 16 is negative 16, and 1 plus negative 16 is negative 15. So we're going to split the middle term using a positive 1x squared and a negative 16x squared in place of that negative 15x squared. Now we factor by grouping. Our first two terms have an x squared in common, and our last two terms have a negative 16 in common. When we pull those out, they both leave behind a common factor of x squared plus 1. So pull it out, leaving behind an x squared minus 16. Well, x squared plus 1 will not factor because it's not a difference of squares, but x squared minus 16 will, and it will factor as x plus 4 times x minus 4. I hope this factoring review has been helpful. You may need to rewind if you want to take notes or pause, of course, but hopefully that was a good little review.